three, six, five, shake my hand. Good, well, good morning, but good evening to you guys or late afternoon, whenever you're gonna be watching this. Um, welcome to another Traders War Room. I will be walking you guys through a couple of charts, a couple of things I wanna to talk to you guys about. Um, it's gonna be a shorter version of a war room only because of time. Number one, I am pre-recording just to preempt the South African loading schedule, schedule number one, number two, and pre-recording because at some time tonight, um, I, I might have to hit the road and travel. It is the end of the year, uh, 365 Trading Academy. Like our greatest work is obviously our education program. Fundamentally, I, I enjoy the education program more than anything else, right? I don't want to waste anyone's time, but just to explain. So that's the Academy, but 365 Trading Corp, we deal with corporate clients and that's done good. We've already kind of like hit most of our end of year targets and that's great. But not necessarily plan, but when I started to teach people in 2018, 2019 and out of the, in, into like the COVID range, uh, we developed a group called Senior Traders over time, right? It was like, a, it was not an organized process. It was not an easy process, but nonetheless, it was a process that kind of like bared a lot of fruit. And from there, you know, to date, we've got six trading prop firms uh, that I don't run, I don't control, I don't fund, I don't have shares in, I don't invest in. Um, um, literally the creation of licensed registered traders in South Africa. Uh, and so at the end of the year, I do travel to see each firm, so spend some time with them, uh, I do some, 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 some building, right? So trading psychology building, uh, uh, massive reviews um, so that they, they know to get their data ready. And so for the next few days to, 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 to up to the end of November, it's going to be very interesting because I need to be here in Grahamstown for most of this month, but also in and out. Luckily enough, we do have a couple of teams traveling to me, but I might also have to travel just close by here to East London. I might have to travel to Joburg. And the rest of the teams will come here to Grand Town at the Grand Hotel. So, so I'm quite excited. I'm really quite excited. Uh, so, so a lot of the reason why I'm pre-recording our world today is just to prep for all of that kind of stuff that's about to come. Unfortunately, due to power cuts, the last week of our course has been terribly affected. So because according to my schedule, I shouldn't be teaching live classes right now, right? According to our, our plan in September, I'll be long done teaching and I'll be very much focused on, on, on the ground kind of stuff and building people, etc. But anyway, it's all good. So, so, so let's get cracking, guys. So, so because of that, I, 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 it will be a short warm. I, I'm not neglecting anyone. I'm not disappearing now. It's, it's up to you. Please stay subscribed. Hit the notification button because what I'm doing is I've already got most of my notes ready and I just need to self-record a lot of these videos and upload them this week, uh, you know, in the AMs. So I'll do my best to get through them if I'm in a good hotel and it's got good network. I, 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 I will put some stuff up for you as well. If you are in my live classes, don't panic. I, I'm still crafting a plan for us to just stay looped in so we can finish the course this week, all right? But yeah, this is a trade in the uh, 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 phase one October trading plans. This is the, the copper copper trade. And, and, and I, I want to tell you guys something. Generally speaking, I know when a trade is not going to go well before it hits my stop loss, generally speaking. And it's something that you need to develop, right? And there, there, there are two approaches. Number one, trade the plan, uh, plan the trade, right? So which is to say, wait for your stop loss to get hit. And that's kind of like, how I am, I'm old school like that. Like if my stop loss isn't it, I'm, st I'm, I'm still in it, right? But this, these are good rejections inside our demand, but our demand has been completely obliterated, right? So, so there are two reasons for that. Number one is the closest demand to supply. So the sell pressure from the supply was heavy. I'm looking at copper. If you don't know what I mean, uh, um, um, this week is another week. If you're, if you're getting into our remote course, if you want our lifetime signals, if you, if you all that kind of stuff, there's a week to, to kind of like stay focused because I will be uploading uh, phase two of long-term sell signals and buy signals in, in the markets, right? Because it's kind of like we discuss it first in Warren. For those of you who will not be taking the extra step of joining us, so that you kind of like have a vague idea where we're going to make our monies. And then in generally speaking, I craft an extremely detailed plan on how to go about doing that. And so this was one of the trades that was the first to get triggered. The most of the trades in phase one will not be triggered, have not yet been triggered. Uh, uh, and fundamentally, that was because I held back 
choosing extreme levels up until I heard from FOMC, which we did uh, this past Wednesday, or was it this past Thursday or Wednesday or something like that, Thursday probably, I can't remember. And then the following day with NFP, which gave us the final data set. Yes, they CPI that always follows NFP this coming week, but it won't matter. The CPI will not matter. It will shake markets around left, right and center, but it won't change a single thing about, about the plan. The plan is done. We are tapering. I've done a YouTube video on what the FOMC said this week, so I'm not going to waste a lot of valuable time on that, but just, just so we're all clear, this is what I'm talking about. Inside our remote course is our full course, our full online traders course. You know, someone said made a comment saying if I do the course, I, it means I won't get a chance to, 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 to ask questions. That's not true, right? So how it works is once you've completed the remote course by yourself or, or any point in time, you are entitled to one-on-one. So, so it's actually, uh, there, there are people in, in the public Telegram group who've actually gone through that process, who didn't uh, enter 365 via the live classes, but by the remote course. And then there are a couple of people who just completed the remote course and are now waiting to be scheduled in for a one-on-one. -on -one. So I sit through with you, you bring all your questions. Basically, this is what the remote course will look like. It's got all my lecture series, every single thing, and weekly PDFs are, you know, in the weeks that apply. But anyways, the trading signals are in here, financial notes, forex, and stocks, and we're talking about the October challenge. And this is the trade that I gave out on copper, right? So, so in here is how I map out my signals, right? Because I want you to know why I'm doing it, and hopefully you learn. But more importantly, you're actually looking at my trading plan. So, so it takes me time to craft this for you, but it's worth it because I can justify my trade and and we've had very good runs on this right so so, so don't get discouraged uh if, if if you're not yet in the in the remote course whenever you can the stuff is there to review right so there's trade number 10 copper and you can see that this is when i made the analysis price was literally just about to enter the zone and now that's where we are so i i mean i i did say it i did see like I said, it, it's almost very easy for me to almost identify. So it's, it's inside my watch list, and, and I know copper it closed a little bit positive, right? So we almost went up half a percent, uh, and you know it's, it's a futures market, right? So so my my thinking is number one, I think this demand is broken, number one, uh, and this is why I say this. So if you really extend your view, you will realize, oh goodness gracious, the demand is broken, right? So, so that's not a good sign. That's number one. Number two, yes, we still not stopped out, but but it, it might be time to start considering that this will be a, a, an, an extreme possibility, right? And, and so what you want to look out for is something like this. If we're lucky and we get a break to the upside, like that, break even, because then if price comes back, it might take you out. If we're lucky, price might not come back. So, so here is a bearish engulfing pattern that weakened our demand. Uh, and price spike into it right there. So any type of movement to the upside break even, right? And, 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 and I'm saying this to say, I want to break even uh, uh, on for the sole purpose of not losing any type of money on the trade, right? But then again, price could rally up and it would be one of those trades where we're like, ah, oh no, we should have held, et cetera, et cetera. Now I can tell you right now, there is a very small chance, you know, that I will be able to break even, right? And given the nature of my week, I will most likely will not be looking at charts, you know, that focus, honestly speaking. And for me, that's extremely therapeutic sometimes. Sometimes uh, I, I, I rushing and panicking and getting in the way of myself is why some of my profits back in the day used to be cut very short because you want to control the event, you want to control the money, you want to make sure you get every dollar. And so you start to make silly decisions, opening and closing, opening and closing, opening and closing, which portrays poor psychology. So I will leave my stop loss as is because anyways, guys, I personally speaking for myself will be ridiculously busy this week. This is like this week and next week are just completely insanely busy for me. Uh, uh, and so I won't be looking at charts, you know, the, the way I would want to. I'll have my normal 4 a.m. routine and my one hour bedtime routine to look at my watch list and just see what's, what's happening in the markets. But I'll not be actively trading or managing positions. So those of you who are and you're scared, break even. I can tell you right now, demand is broken. Never a good sign. Number one, number two, it was close to supply. Number three, you know, this particular asset, guys, is at an all-time high. So I, I really don't know what I was thinking. Uh, I mean, it's a buy-profile asset, et cetera, et cetera, but it doesn't necessarily justify 
Why? Right. So we're looking at market structure because I was teaching on this the last time we're together in the live classes. So this might help you recap some stuff. We got we got we, 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 we've got a high somewhere there, right? Uh, you know, a higher high, higher high compared to this previous structure here. And then after that, we start to make a lower high and then we make another lower high. And then something weird happens and then we start to create a higher high. So this is a good sign if you want to go long. The problem is we need the demands to hold. So if the demands were to hold, then yes, we'll get another higher high there, which is really the play that we wanted to take. But now that they've broken that demand, it might mean something else. So for example, uh, 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 we can only fault copper if copper doesn't create a lower high. So for example, if markets were to break structure and then maybe land here. So that's another thing to do, which is most likely what I would do tomorrow morning. Uh, I remember we all have different risk appetites. I don't mind losing 1%, 2% on small trades like this uh, because I'm a swing trader. So fundamentally, if, if, if I buy again, I don't want to buy to, to, to let go. I could buy the one is to three, which is here. This is about one is to three risk reward ratio and take the profits and move on, which means I make up for this little loss. Or I could buy to hold and hope they break the supply into new higher highs, right? So it's, it's really... Uh, just just a, a, a dealer's choice. So I would probably put another pending buy order here instead of going, you know, a standard lot size here like I did the first time. What I will do now is go half a standard lot size, so 0 0.50, not a recommended lot size for you. I'm talking about the accounts I I will be using, and because I've gone 0 0.50, have a wider stop loss, right? Wider stop loss. So reduce lot size to get, you know, a, a much more a much more uh, 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 you know, flexibility in terms of price movement then swing. And, and that's because there's a, there's a demand here, right? And this demand has already served its time. You can see markets bounce there. But what, what I'm trying to do here is give copper room to breathe. I want copper, if copper wants to go down, I want it to go down, but I also don't want to miss it going up, specifically if copper is in the mood to create a new higher high, and we will know it is, even if it breaks this demand and does not create a new lower low. So it can't come lower than this. So you can come down here and then start to turn. And then we'll say this is a higher low. So if that happens, I'm very happy with the trade. And anyway, there's another demand somewhere here. Uh, bullish government pattern, fresh touch, did not ever get a retest. So this was, you know, in hindsight, a better place to, 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 to wait for a buy. All right, in hindsight. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm still very bullish on copper, copper, platinum, um, all, all, the, all these things that took a, you know, a nasty beating and then became uh, uh, extremely profitable during the COVID pandemic, like almost like, uh, uh, you know, investors put a lot of money. Yes, there'll be a lot of people trying to take profits. Now, granted, there's a very, you know, I, I, I don't want to ignore these patterns and then people watch these videos and assume 365 traders don't know this stuff. We know it, we don't really care too much about retail trading strategies, but there's a very weak um, um, head and shoulders pattern. And that's because the head is slightly lower, right? Very weak. Um, generally speaking for head and shoulders, you want something that looks like this. But yeah, we've got something that looks like that. And then one would argue that there's a, a neckline somewhere there. So yeah, price could definitely extend to the downside. I can see that. I'm not yet focused on that perspective, but if I get dinged there, you know, no harm, no foul. But those of you who are in the trade who are following the plan, I say be very careful, you know, in my plan. And just so you know, I predicted, no, I don't want to say predicted, but I, I, I did caution this in the actual document. So this is the document in the Traders War Room that I sent to you guys uh, uh, on the 20th of October. Phase two is dropping you know, this week, believe it or not, as busy as I will be this week, I'll be dropping phase two. It's slightly longer. It's got all the rest of the assets I'm going to be putting in the indices now. I mean, you've seen how extended NASDAQ is, the Dow Jones, all that kind of beautiful stuff. So some serious money is about to be made. Because remember, markets, remember this, I, I, get, I put all of this, the, all of this has happened. Guys, be mindful of these dates. Uh, about the dollar. This was, this was really looking at the DXY and we're talking about how not a single demand had been broken and that still stands. Supplies have been removed still after that. So everything 
that we've been looking forward to since the beginning of October, guys, is perfectly aligned. And it's just beautiful. Right? So all of this has been done now. The ICM, ADP was positive. This happened, press conference, where we spoke about tapering, NFP was positive, right? So DXY is on track. The dollar is on track. We know what our risky assets are about to do. We're about to see some risk off on risky assets and some dollar pool. Right, and I think I have to look at a gold trade. Somebody asked me to look at gold. Ah, and I forgot to take notes on a couple of 365 traders charts on, on our private Telegram group that I'm supposed to look at. All off the top of my head, I know pounds just frank was a, a, a topic of conversation. I'm so sorry, I will have a look at those notes and I'll, like I said, I'll be uploading war rooms wherever I am, very short ones though. So to cover three or four assets, just so we can keep the ball rolling right so i'm with you for the next hour or so we'll see how much we can cover all right and, and then and then and then we can go right but anyways so 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 if if if, if in front of you here so this is dxy uh, i'm looking for cover right so this is what i said i said look man when i last analyzed this pair i believe they did a short video on it a few days has passed but copper did not remove the supply. You see, what would have been nice about copper is if this supply had been taken up and I put it there in the plan in October, right, before coming down. So please watch your back moving forward. This could be a short buy or no buy, right? So generally speaking, I am extremely risk aware. Um, 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 I, 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 and because I believe in trading in clusters and your PL averaging out, I just simply trade the plan, right? But if, for those of you who don't understand this language, or, or if this trade doesn't work out, you can't say, I didn't warn you, like it's all there. We have a daily supply and control and some lower demands. So watch those levels closely. My trading signals, guys, work so much better for 365 students because they being, understand my style of trading. They've done the course, right? So I give you an entry point and a stop loss, and I say trader's choice, but be very careful of the active daily supply. And here we are looking at the chart a couple of days later, about a week later. And for sure, for sure, I was right. The, the, the supply is still very active, very engaged. Half the supply has been taken out, but you can see you see the sell orders there, right? So it's up to structure now and how money goes. Do they want to create an all-time high before the end of the year? If they do, they will. If they don't, they'll seek it lower, right? So so that's it about, about copper. It's just to, to highlight that. The one trade that we've been triggering that I don't want to discuss in today's war room because we've done it millions of times and hope all of you are holding, but right? I, I did a survey in the private group. Um, and I think the results, last I checked, 60% of you are still in Euro USD cell with me. 60% of you are still in the Euro USD cell. And the one that I was talking about, I, I, I know I know my chart is a little bit of a mess. I know my chart is not, it's not a mess, but if you don't understand the zones and all that kind of stuff that will drive you nuts. So let me try and clear it out for you. Right, but 60% of you are here. So you've, you've, you've kind of like locked in, you sold here. Right, so, so let's just be very clear. There was a swing self here in Euro USD that we all should be holding because we spoke about it in the war room. There was this one that I am pretty sure I got in by myself. This was the FOMC meeting. Uh, 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 but I got in this one because it was a news event trade, but all our original sales were up here, which I hope someone, I know I know in the senior traders program, 72% of the senior traders are still in these sales with me in Euro USD. And this is module one stuff. This is module one stuff. You do what the governor is doing when the governor is doing it with a clean multiple time frame analysis, bearish engulfing pattern on the daily time frame inside a governing supply zone gave us a perfect entry, and we should all have been holding. And the FOMC came on the 6th of June to increase interest rates. If those of you remember, there was extra money to confirm to reward who the people got in early. Euro USD, despite what your guru's signal service, what I don't care, has been selling off since May this year because that is it. We literally stick to what the banks are doing because what the banks do is what makes for money. Right? And since then, you would not you would not have been stopped out here. We have not been stopped out here. I would have not, I did not get in here, but I definitely told everyone to get in somewhere here, right? There's downtrend and we spoke about this at a war room. My war rooms are like live, they're on YouTube. So you just check the dates, you see it for yourself, you mark up your charts, you set and forget and we move on, right? And then this was the last war room Euro USD entry that I gave. I don't think from a swing perspective, right? You know, you know, 
I, I doubt I'll be entering EURUSD again, unless it is like high risk trades in their short term. But in my swing account, why would I? I, I we are literally still, this is, our original drop is all the way down here now. This is massive, right? And, 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 and this is a good, 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 good trading position. And you would know the rules, right? If you do this in Euro USD, you could do the same in pound USD, right? Pound USD just follows Euro USD. But that's 734 pips. Uh, I don't know why on my live account is 735. Maybe I jumped in a little bit too late. I don't know. But 734, 735, uh, 725, whatever, sorry. That's good money. But we are here. Let's talk about where we are here. I don't want to waste time on Euro USD. There's nothing to say about Euro USD. We, 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 we checked the FOMC live event last week, Wednesday, Thursday, as a private student group. Uh, I posted the video the following day on Thursday this week or Friday this week. Just check out our YouTube channel. And there's just a lot about dancing, dancing, dancing here. But if you zoom in a bit, you can see that all Euro USD was doing was creating a nice clean version of pattern. And, and this is how we started last week. I told you guys on, on my social media page, retail traders are saying EURUSD is a long buy. This was on Monday last week. So this is Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. Long buy. They believe this was a long buy. If you've done my course, you'll know there's a version of golfing pattern. You'll know understand the supply. You know it needs to get retested. When it gets retested, price drops. Price dropped systematically every time there was a use event. For example, FOMC token price went up to get higher sales and then dropped again, creating another bearish engulfing pattern. On Friday, we ended the week off by first of all, think about it logically. NFP drops. What is what's NFP positive for the dollar? This positive for the dollar, then Euro USD, pound USD have to fail. So markets dropped. Literally, there's a green candle. Yes, there's a green candle, but markets first dropped in reaction to the NFP. I would know because I was trading it live. And not only that, it, when price dropped, price removed a demand. There is nothing now to stop Euro USD from falling, darling, for a while and extra. And you know, some of you are going to try this week to get in. And, and, and in God's speed, because there might be a good enough energy to do that, but it's just high risk now because you're now fighting with chickens at the bottom, right? But, but there's still an extra 127 pips. For those of you who are still with me in the true sales, right? All the way from May, on top of our 700, I'm on 72, 725 pips, but according to TradeView, it's dropped 735. So I don't know where I missed those 10 pips, but there's still an extra 127 pips. But those of you who joined me last week in a final new entry on this position and are still holding, those of you who took the poll, I put the poll on the public and private uh, group, right? So, so, so it's, it's just for me to see, am I wasting my time for next year? Like, are these war rooms useful? Are people, because it's, it's a little bit much. It's, 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 it's a bit draining, right? So you have a target point now of about 239 pips, 240 pips, if you got in with me here. Hold it. See it through. Yes, some of you have started to manage your positions, and that's fine. You know, you want to lock some profits, you never know, et cetera, et cetera. I completely accept that. I understand that. But your trading psychology also will need gradual work over time. Don't lock too tightly and, uh, and stop trail something that is proven to you in months and months, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, is kept telling you, I am selling. Yes, there'll be days where there's three or four or five, seven green days. There'll be weeks, two weeks in advance where price is going. If you do take Leroy's course, you will always know where I'm going to turn. I am selling. So those of you don't get cut off. Imagine this, you get one good trade like Euro USD that gives you 735 pips on your equity rate, on your trading platform. And then for the rest of the month, you make 15 stupid trading mistakes on 15 different trading assets, but your risk management is good because you've done my week four, week five on risk management. The profits on this one trade still balance you out. If you're risking about, I don't know, 15 to 20 to 30 to 40 pips per trade, and you're holding a 735 pip winner, it's a no brainer, you're still in the clear. What you want to start doing is hold very good trades, understanding market direction, and start to work on your weakness. A lot of traders kill their good running horses and focus on chances, right? This is a massive chance to start selling at the bottom here. 
It's a big chance. Price should fall, it will, but there's a lot of movement between now and then on the interday timeframe. So for example, because it was NFP, we were forced to lock profits. Because it was NFP, we were forced to lock profits. Right, so the 30 minute supply here, which I told you guys about in one of my war rooms, in one of my videos, or in one of my classes, I don't know which group I told, but I told someone about it, right? So if I go to the 30 minutes time frame, you will see it. it was confirmed by Fibonacci. There we go. I'm so good. Not good, but you know, I remember. And this could consider, because it is almost a fresh touch. Right, it, it just means the area of competition was quite thick. And we've been talking about this a bit, in, in, you know, at 365, that it seems now that price would very much prefer that we draw the entire order block, right, and the entire area of value and forget about our, our concept of the reasonable body. If you think about how we got triggered in Euro USD on the daily time frame, they did not use the reasonable body. They focused purely on the order block and the body size of the order block was not a reasonable body. So you need to watch out for this, right? So there's a 30 minute supply here. And then uh, uh, on Friday, uh, uh, for those of you who were trading NFP with me, I did speak about the fact that there was a one hour time frame supply up here. And so what we did to protect ourselves in case NFP was a, was a flat out fail for the dollar, which would have been impossible, but uh, uh, on a scale of probabilities, you always have to think about the risks involved. I told everyone to lock their trades above this one hour supply there. And, you know, you could leave it there. I have obviously before markets close on Friday completely readjusted my plan. So I'm back to keeping my, my, my lock profits just above these two supplies, the 30 minute supply, and then there's this weird supply there. So all I have is my, my lock profits just somewhere above there. And the reason for that is I wanna give price enough room to recoup. You could, if you wanted, try to take a bit here. So London session opens. This might be the first place they're going to activate on Monday. I will be there with you. I've got a pin in order here, very small, very silly uh, size. Uh, just to say I gave a signal and I took the trade because some people give signals and they don't take the trades and people lose money by themselves. So I, I, I wouldn't want to have such a reputation. So I, I, will, I will, I am looking at this area here. Uh, and for, for, for some type of content, right? And if we do what I've been asking everybody to do, right? So we throw, we, we start off with the first swing high, swing low on this chart, swing high, swing low. You can see it's, it's high up, it's in the 70s. So, so, so that's a good place for market reversal, not the best place for market retracement, right? You can see our golden ratio, our 61,8% uh, is actually confirming market resistance so that's why i have this little you know yellow bar here because i also want to make sure i'm in touch with what retail traders are doing so so anything could happen here as well right so markets could come up and, and kind of like get stuck here right so you can see historically markets have tried to, to kind of like fight 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 and then bounce up and then break so this could be a nice place to stop but we do have a bullish and golfing pattern on the one hour time frame uh so just keep Keep a note of that. We've got break of market structure here to the downside, right? And that's why I really I would like to take because I really don't care about support and resistance. I, I don't. It's something that I'm just generally aware of, but it's not really something that influences my 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 trading. And like, look, man, history is on. You know, history is on. Your goal in the markets is to not lose money and make as much money as you can. With, with losing very little, right? But there's a break of market structure here. So I do like the supply that broke structure, right? The supply here took out structure. The imbalance is undeniable. This is again, generally speaking for me, the type of supplies you take to your mother to show her that you want to get married to it. This is what a good supplier would look like. So you might get movement like this during the Asian markets. And by the London session, you might get a strong movement like that. And then New York session, you might get a bounce back. And then markets should follow through. Right, something like that. I don't know. It really doesn't matter for me because we are holding long term sales and we've sold high, right? So if this supply doesn't hold, then we've got the 30 minute supply. The 30 minute supply doesn't hold, we've got this supply before I get completely kicked out of all my trades in Euro USD. And I feel very uncomfortable. But the only reason why I've locked profits, generally speaking, I would not. Generally speaking, I would actually lock halfway through. So if I'm up 735 pips, I would only lock the first 300 pips to really give room to breathe because for me, I get paid due to my patience. 
in the markets. But because of how this week is for me and the little chart time I'll have, that's what I've done. So that's Euro USD. I don't want to waste time. You will see the exact same. See this? Let's, let's go to Pound USD. Exact same plan. I'm not going to do a full, you know, fractal analysis. There we go. There's our, our, our Pound USD. This was a beautiful trade to use to hedge yourself. By the way, when trading news events, if you looked at how this pair was moving, this pair, I, I did a video where I showed you guys my losses. I last week when I was trading the news event on, on, on my high impact account, I think I, I lost about 170 US dollars just playing around buy sell buy sell. Uh, you know, as he was talking, it's like a fun thing to do when you because you're trying to check. I, was trying, I, I, I keep trying to work. How do I teach a robot to track market tone and the keywords? So, for example, FOMC will say something about. Uh, 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 he was asked a question, and the question was, why is this taper, you know, twice the speed? And he said, look, man, it's twice the speed than the previous taper in 2013, whatever, because the job, the economy is 10 times better. Our job numbers are growing. The economy is recovering very well despite COVID, Nasdaq, and all those things. Love that kind of stuff, right? So, so I was trying to catch that and trying to see how, how could you program a robot? Like we, we are working on the 365 bot in the background. So, 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 that, so yeah, so a lot of back tests, but anyways, a pound USD took its time to react to that. So if I was in a bad trade, so that's how like the 169 was chopped up in small losses, $40 here, $20 there, $30 there, and it became 149. But I was able to hedge it with, with, with one win in trade during that entire news event and made about 80 bucks on pound USD to kind of like offset the loss on the account, right? So I wasn't trading the news like seriously, like, oh my goodness gracious, this is a, I was trying to trade tone, sentiment, long story. But yeah, on the one hour time frame, we have exactly the same thing. All right, we've got, and, and I'll, I would make sure it's actually quite a healthy hold because if price does come back to the one hour supply that we just saw in Euro USD, we can guarantee that there's going to be some sluggish, much more easier, predictable movement on pound USD. You can see, you know, the difference between the two, you know, markets are still to even make, the, you know, a move here to break out. While as Euro USD as a, bullish engulfing pattern that wants to be retested. You know, pound USD is like, yeah, but we'll know we're going down. Here's my bridge engulfing pattern. I haven't even bothered to break the one hour supply. Let's stop wasting time. Can we please go down now? But if it doesn't go down because Euro USD is going to start off on the London markets, London session quite bullish, then yeah, you know, something to, to kind of like think about, something to think about, but hedge yourself, right? For this one, I am not breaking even anytime soon. No, no, sorry, I've broken even. I am not locking profits anytime soon. I'm holding as is just to give it as much room as possible because I really want to maximize on this. Remember, the structure for pound USD is slightly different on the governing time frame. While Euro USD has already broken completely its governing demand, what pound has done is it almost, it acted like it was triggering a, a governing supply, a governing demand, I apologize but it wasn't, you know, I can't help but feel like my computer is just a little bit slow today. Right, so so, so remember, if you go withdraw the whole order block, you'll get a situation like this, where it looked like pound USD was, you know, making contact. And if you go to the reasonable body thesis, then you're stuck with something like this. And if you really think about it, this looks like a PCP to me on pound. This looks like, look, we're going down, we gave it a three-star candle, then we're now, now, now it's a the area. And before you know it, you know, the month of November should close a little bit lower or make contact there. So this could end up being a very engulfing pattern, which is why I don't want to mess up any of the cells I got inside this yellow zone. I want to hold them, uh, you know, as they are, let price dance around so, so, so I can really, really, really start next year or end the year off, you know, quite profitably. We only got two more months, two more candles, right? The close of November and the close of a December candle on these two charts, right? So, so, so that's kind of like, you know, the basis on pound USD. Now, because of time and how short some of these war rooms have to be, I, I can't help but think I need to talk to you guys about crypto. But I feel like maybe I should make a separate short video on it, guys. A lot of stuff is about to happen. And you teach you guys about the maximum pain theory in the financial markets. A lot of you are, uh, I, don't, I don't know, when I say a lot of you, I'm not talking about 365 traders or 365 people. I'm just talking about retail traders in general. Your mindset is very off about the crypto markets. Your mindset 
it is going to ensure that you suffer the most this November, December, end of December. And also when hedge funds reset their books in January and they start off with cryptocurrency, you are going to be part of the maximum pain theory because markets are psychology. That's all they are, psychology driven. And what everyone expects to happen won't happen, right? The path or, you know, or with the least resistance is never followed by the market. So if everyone is just going down this route. So I'll tell you right now what crypto crypto gurus and retail trader geniuses are thinking about. And maybe some of you who are inclined to do a little bit of research we would have picked up that number one Bitcoin and its trajectory is following the 2013 mark. Ethereum and its current trajectory is following Bitcoin right now. Right, this is amazing because this shows human beings are thinking the same, right? Why? Because remember, we want mass adoption. When we get mass adoption, we get clean predictability. It's like how did human beings adopt to the internet? Cryptocurrency is seeing an adoption rate of 4x, right? So four times the rate. It got everyone quicker to be on Facebook, to be on the internet, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, to get a, a, a modem, you know, those dial-up modems, 56 KB speed, whatever it was back then, right? And, and I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna talk about crypto right now because I've got a lot of notes on this and I wanna do this video properly, but I can tell you right now that a lot of your heroes in the crypto space are seeing this as a pattern. So Bitcoin 2013, December, does anyone know what happened in 2013, December? We had our first big crash, which led to a four to five to six to seven months sell-off, right? December crash. And four years later, I really want you to learn this, guys. Patterns are important because human beings are important. They, they make patterns. 2017, December, does anyone remember what happened? Four years later, we had a crash. Now, if you add another four years to 2017, you think about December, four years later, what do we have? We have Bitcoin in 2021, December, sell-off. It's not going to be a crash, it's going to be a sell-off, but the sell-off is going to get everyone thinking it's a crash. When everyone thinks it's a crash, people are going to get up. When people get up, they're going to feel the most pain because of the Bitcoin rip because people haven't started accounting for the impact of institutions. So I will do a separate video on crypto. I'm not making this stuff up. I've got a lot of beautiful notes for you guys for, for the next video. But I'm just thinking about the fact that, you know, my war rooms need to be complete. And if, there we go. I don't think I'm making assets. I've got a lot of good stuff for you. A lot of coins calls for you, et cetera, et cetera. And, and obviously I'm going to be diving in deep with this stuff for those of you in the wealthy in three years program. So please, if you're into this stuff, if you, you don't want to miss the trade, get link down below, join the wealthy in three years program. Um, it's 10 US dollars per month. It's ridiculously cheap. Uh, because I do this for myself anyways and for corporate clients. So there's not real much work for me to charge you for. It's just to get as many people involved, right? And in, take control of your financial uh, you know, future. But the world in three years, 10 bucks per month, it's an annual subscription of 120 US dollars and you get full financial notes of what I'm buying every single month in the crypto markets, altcoin markets, stocks markets, global and local stocks. You get all of that ahead of time before I make those uh, uh, buys. And the world in three years, November, no, today is the seventh. Oh my goodness gracious. It will drop between today and Tuesday. So just check your emails for those of you already subscribed. We are, we're already, we are, we are almost about to start running behind. But also look forward to a video I'm going to drop in sometime this week on the crypto space. I really want to just focus on, 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 uh, um, our war room trades for this week, right? But but I did do a good video on Bitcoin a few days ago, this past week as well, showing you guys that the Bitcoin, you know, a, a big player is involved now in Bitcoin, right? Institutions. And when institutions are involved, you 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 you, you must understand how they play the game, right? So the video that I did, I told you guys that markets this week were not going to go past this level. And I, I went all the way to show you guys the futures report. And I show you that there were more shorts in Bitcoin than longs that institutions had put in. So the thing was about 7,000 longs and 11,000 shorts, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see markets simply just ranged, right? Really, they, retail traders held their ground, refused for this thing to fall. And institutions held their grounds and wanted this thing to, to kind of like stay there. And, and, and I said, we'll have to see now. So now Bitcoin is like our, our foreign currency pairs now. We have to trade them on a week-to-week -week basis. These, for me, are very good areas to buy. 
trading so or, or, or on my buy bit platform and, and i'll do the same in binance um etc cetera, etc cetera. i'll do the same in arbitrate because i use crypto uh or in arbitrate to kind of like quickly grow my equity so i can keep swinging my fx long term but uh i i, I haven't had a clean signal that markets are going to get there because we checked the new futures report and I got you on our YouTube channel. There is now a new playlist called All Things Crypto. So every week I will break this stuff down. This is a futures report, 2nd of November, right? And so we obviously know that these reports come out every single Tuesday and they are fundamentally important. I'm gonna quickly run. I will, I remember I'm gonna do a separate crypto video at some point in time for you guys. Maybe tonight when I come back, maybe tonight when I come back, might be worth worth your while to do kind of like just subscribe please subscribe turn on the notification button because this week when i drop a video i might even be poor at, at letting you know that i've dropped a video right there we go so second of november this past tuesday look at this so the longs have increased a bit and the shorts have decreased just by a little bit right remember the shorts were about eleven thousand. longs are seven the longs are now nine shorts are ten right non-commercial that the, the, that's an interesting change it's an absolute look at like like a, a one almost two thousand orders change right from from tuesdays from tuesday's orders right literally an increase here by almost two thousand orders and a decrease by 859 orders right so that's quite kind of like slightly more significant and then in total we now have about eleven thousand five hundred sixty nine mm -hmm. bullish orders or buy orders and just under you know, under 13,000 shorts. So, so, so it's still into the short side, but in general, I think the, it, this was caused this range, this balancing out of, of markets here, bridging off and pattern being created but markets going a little bit higher, breaking this to re-trigger that. Right, and, and this could be, you know, what one could argue, but Leroy, isn't that a fresh touch on price fall? It will, it, it could fall, but yeah, you, we're going to have to talk about crypto in my next video. So you understand the Bitcoin space of what's about to happen. But if you don't know what to do, and for some reason, you just stubborn and you don't want to join the World Team Three Years program, and you don't know what to do, don't sell your cryptocurrency until next year, June. Is that simple? If you don't know what to do, and you're not going to join the World in three years, so you, 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 you want guidance to how to 5x, xx, 3x, your crypto gains, which, which tokens to look at. Uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about networking. I'm going to talk to you guys about, about the, uh, you know, Metcalf's law, right? We use Metcalf's law to, 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 to kind of like analyze our networks, right? To kind of like evaluate the strength of a network, Ethereum, you know, no, 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 DeFi, all those are networks. So you must understand how they work. How do you get more nudes in? What are the applications? If you don't want to learn any of that stuff to maximize your profit and you simply want to do things your way, my only advice to you is there's going to be pain that's going to come in December. Don't sell. Keep buying. Keep buying, keep buying, keep buying. Keep buying, especially with specific alts and Ethereum. All right. Uh, and I think. No, that's the best I can say. But there's going to be what I call an extended cycle. Everyone thinks the Bitcoin cycle will end this December. There might be a lot of sell-off, right? You can see I'm starting to price in some sell-offs. If this doesn't happen, even better than markets go lower. This is for trading. But if markets do a, a bigger sell-off than this, then I'm very, very, very... This is currently half. You understand? There's almost a 50% sell-off, right? We're on 60-something. This is all the way down to 36,000. If this... There's not enough and Bitcoin is to sell off a bit more. I'm going hard because Bitcoin, for, 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 with my new numbers, and those of you in the world in three years, you will get my notes. You'll see why I'm looking at a 300K rally price point and 80 to 20,000 US dollars for Ethereum. And that's a significant difference from what everyone else in the world is saying. And I'll justify why and I'll explain why. But if you don't want to join the world in three years program, just keep buying and hold these things. Doesn't matter what happens. Keep buying and hold these things. You only lose money in crypto when you come out at a loss, when you come out at a loss. For you to lose money in crypto investing, you have to make that mistake. You have to be less patient. You have to, to, to panic and close. You have to use that money for your future for an immediate problem. No matter what's going on in your life, the money you put away for investment is for investment. You can make a plan. You can make a plan for it. You or you, you will always make a plan if you're disciplined enough not to touch that pie. That pie is to make sure that you never poor again. 
So be very careful about what's about to happen. When smart money enters a space and a field, right? These guys, these guys, they don't like competition. And right now, every single retail trader in the world is competition. Every single person who owns a piece of crypto, a piece of this is competition, right? Last thing I'll say, and I'll explain in, 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 in my video for Ethereum is don't forget there's only 10 to 11% supply of Ethereum in the market. Most of us are, 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 are holding, we're stacking our Ethereum. We, 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 we've borrowed it out for, 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 for more yields because we understand Ethereum 2.0 drops. If you want to link it to macro picture, I did a video explaining that what the FOMC has done, which is to taper, is extremely bullish for crypto markets. Because remember, if you're tapering, you are saying, oh my goodness, inflation is terrible. If inflation is terrible, we know that crypto is an inflation hedge. All the PCs are finally aligning. Things that you don't even think about are finally aligned. I appreciate you for being on the channel and I hope to keep illuminating you on those things. But if you do not join Wealth in Three Years program, you don't want to maximize or, or, or on your future or whatever, and you want to make these goals by yourself, I want you to know uh, the 7th of November, it's going to be a big mistake to sell your cryptocurrency in November, in December, sorry, end of December. No matter what you see on the charts, take the pain. It's not, it's not even investing advice. You, you do, do what you want. But those of you in the Wealth in Three Years program, those are my financial notes that you, you, you are, you, if you buy into the Wealth in Three Years program, you're simply saying, for some reason, you think I know what I'm doing and you want to copy it, right? And I'm giving you my plan. Follow my plan. If that's what you want to do, but it's not financial advice. Just, mm. right. So anyways, I'm trying. I'm trying to help as many people as possible. Right. So let's start off with the first chat. Palm Swiss Frank. I see. Marta, Marta. So, Mom Eunice, thank you so much for being such a constant light in the academy. Uh, she posted this chat up in our private group and said, sit and forgets works, um, um, et cetera, et cetera. Why? Because she's really referring to some trade calls I made in April uh, last year. And you know, the problem is because I, I, I went through a cycle of, of just different trades, I got triggered onto this on my other trade account. And I just assumed as an analysis I did a week ago, or two weeks ago, until I saw your comment, Eunice. So shake my hand if you're watching. I appreciate you. Um, um, that was just like, like, yes, people are actually using this financial news. Right. So, 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 so we spoke about selling Swiss franc a while back at the beginning of the year. Um, 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 and this was this downtrend we would hit. Yes, indeed. And then we, we, I think everyone was kind of like sharing their perspective and worry about how sharp price fell into this area of value. And it's unfortunate, right? So I agree with most of you and your analysis. It's kind of like going to be like the copper trade for me. Um, there's not much I can do or want to do right now. There's not much I can do or, or remotely want to do. And the reason for that is uh, uh, one, it's a busy week for me. Two, I want I want the trade to play out. So I want to be very sure that it's a loss. It's, it's most likely will be because of, of, of the fluctuation, right? So this is what we can hope for. We can offer a, a, a rally-based demand. So there's good price rejection. If price gets up here, take profits and get out if you're scared. If price gets up here, take profits and get out if you're scared. Why? Because we've got a bearish engulfing pattern. We've got complicated 365 candles. We've got a strange long drop here. I did bring this up in the last war room, though, that Swiss franc, you know, is not really the, the most beloved asset in the markets right now, right? It's really my FX book. It's, 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 it's got, it's got it, yeah, no one believes in the long term that there'll be a strong Swiss right and so so that's why USD Swiss franc is going to be one of the biggest buys buy trades ever you know it's going to be one of the biggest buy trades ever but it's kind of like have a look and what's going on okay this will take time for me to explain you know what, what, what you're looking at here Right, so I'm just going to uh, 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 Swiss franc. See that there? So just like last week, uh, and, and I do remember talking about this last week, it, it, it doesn't mean this trade is going to work, guys. It, 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 it's bad, bad, bad. I, I guarantee you that this is not, it's, 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 it's not really an asset you want to bet on for strength, right? This is, this is quite impactful. 
Right. So the only problem now is how strong is the pound and pound did drop. Um, right. As, as long as that introduction of dollar strength is there. So we want to see a strong dollar so we can experience a weaker uh, Swiss franc number one, because those two pairs are inverse, right? So an inverse correlation. Strong dollar means weak Swiss franc, right? And so naturally, hopefully the pound doesn't necessarily have to be super strong. All we need is some type of very, 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 very good weakness, right? So when this thing was bullish, so you must remember when I do my, my, my trading plans, I'm like looking way into the future and just speculating uh, as much as possible. And I don't think this leg had been completed, right? But if we're looking for a retracement for this buy here, it was somewhere there. And you can see markets have been using our 61.8 here and then here and then a little bit there went lower and then here again, right? Number one. But number two, what's happened is, and this is what I need, this is why the I, I used to, by the way, I literally used to send signals all the time in the public telegram group, chat after chat after chat. Then I'll do polls to ask who's still in it with me. And the problem with the public, it's not your fault, but if you haven't done the course, you, I can't, I'm not a signal service provider and I don't wanna ever be anyone's signal service provider. I don't, it's not, it's one of the most crippling things you can do to traders. It's nice to give people the opportunity to make an, a, you know, some money and all that kind of stuff, but it's, it's fun. It's 10 times much more fun if it's done in a responsible way. So that's why all the signals now are going to stay inside the 365 remote course. Uh, 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 which is still completely free as long as you're a student. And the reason for that is you guys know my rules. You know that when price finally got into the zone here, which would be a governing supply, that money had changed hands, right? And, and I'm sure that's, that's easy to see. Number one, they, they, there isn't much confluence, you know, with, with, with data. And I think it was Mr. Ronald Martin, the private group, was talking about he actually wants it to break lower, right, so that he can buy somewhere down here. And I'd, I'd completely agree with the analysis. What, 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 what I'm here to say is if there's a way for you not to take loss on this trade, uh, uh, definitely maximize on that. Let's hopefully see if price can break up ground to breathe a bit and trigger those daily supplies that's just created. And if price does that, that's fantastic, right? We, we can hold it. But all these yellow zones are the existence of continuous added supply layers. So yes, now it is definitely even more difficult to buy. Um, um, but yeah, I, I'm hopeful that our stop loss and hope doesn't do much in the markets. It's just been me being polite, right? So in a bullish and golfing pattern on the H4 timeframe, then markets changed their minds and went in for a deeper test, which is unfortunate. Right, but in the past, even during a downward trend, a bullish and golfing pattern does do does spark some upward movement. Right, this has been the only example in the latest previous leg. So once again, I am hoping for this to happen, because if price can come up here somewhere, there, then you know you are profitable. Right, you can definitely make a little bit of money. It won't make sense in terms of the type of risk to reward you are doing, but you can hold it until you're profitable. Right, so that you don't kind of like take an unnecessary loss. Once again, unfortunately, I won't be around to babysit this trade with you during the week. It could for for, 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 for for you know for all it cares, you know, give you 153 pips before you give up on it. Or it could just drop, right? It literally could just drop. What's nice to do is to bring out anti-fib and acknowledge this downtrend, right? So let's just acknowledge it real quick. This is the 19th of October, 2020. 21, right, so there we go, 365, a uh, 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 type of supply there to the area, number one, that worked, but more importantly, you know, when looking at our Fibonacci, it gave us a nice golden ratio confirmation and then price dropped, right, we see that, we see that, so we know, okay, Lira's tools, Lira's trading system is working very well, so what we want to do is keep adopting, and then there was a new swing high, so what happened next? This is the swing high here. You, you must be aware, guys, it's getting very, it's getting early late in my house, so the kiddies are going to wake up very soon, right? And price did something like this. See that there? PCP level. We speak about this 0 0.382 levels, but anyways, right? It's, it's, it's just there. I mean, if, if, if you follow me long enough, you will know my stuff is fairly accurate. Not because I'm a market genius, but because I've decided to learn 
how the markets move and just do that, right? And then the second, so one was the first leg, two was the next leg that we've just done. Now we need to find a new leg. This is like sideways, side. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but this just feels very desperate. Makes no sense to me, kind of makes no sense to me. And then there is a strong leg. Remember, you must draw a clear, a zone where a, a, a toddler would be like, yes, I can see for sure, for sure, there's definitely a swing here. Right, and then we went back to almost touching this PCP level and then markets have dropped, right? So markets have been using the, uh, you know, the alternate difference since October this year anyways, of golden ratio and the PCP level of 38%. So now we are now in what looks to be the most recent leg in the markets. And in the most recent leg in the markets, swing high, swing low. And you can see, if you follow the pattern, right, markets have made contact with the 0 0.38. And every time markets make contact with 0 0.38, all the golden ratio markets fall, right? So, so yeah, there's a the high chance, like, like, like I say, that your guys' fears are right, that markets might break through. We are in control of some sellers. I apologize if my mic is making a lot of noise. I'm just trying to make an adjustment. But, you know, it's a wait and see type of game. But well done to all of you. Sorry, specifically, and the, you know, 365 students who pointed this out who are going back to these plans and making micro adjustments. And now to talk about, I think it was Ronald's plan, but if it's not his plan and it's someone else's plan, you will correct me in the comments. Uh, um, 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 we, 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 we might be then be looking into some rejection, right? So all those zones I drew, by the way, were done on the H4 time from the daily time frame. We're still waiting to see a clear swing, right? But if that happens, then there's this block down here for for a buy. And obviously, if this demand, which I think is now broken, is broken, and you get some type of confirmation, I mean, a risky trade would be something like this: taking the sell, taking the opposite side of the plan. That's number one. I would prefer, you know me very well, something from there. I would not like to take something because it just feels so obvious to take something there, right? But yeah, I'm just waiting for price to breathe. If price breathes a bit out of that zone, we will then get break even uh, or, or take profits and get out of the trade, right? So that's pound Swiss franc down. Pound JPY, I feel like I talk about this every week in class because I hate this pair because this pair hates me. Mm, mm, mm. Not much to say. You can see I'm waiting. You can see I am waiting for you. Let's start again. Let's start from the top. But I am waiting down there. I'm going to apologize. Can I just use a clean, a clean chart so that my bias is not affected, right? So this is what I hate about pounds, just uh, JPY. By the way, the book that I'll be giving away this week or that my team in my absence will be trying to push out for you guys. I'm buying this book for the first 100 people. How uh, Adventures of a Currency Trader, it is phenomenal. I've read it three times now, four times actually, you know, and then load shedding came back. I refused to start. Uh, um, um, so my next book, for those of you who came, by the way, uh, uh, that I'm traveling with this week is this one, Trade Against the Crowd by John, uh, uh, Profiting from Fear and Greed, Futures and Options Market. And the reason for that is because I'm preparing myself mentally for a market crash, which has started, if you follow Chinese markets, the market crash has started, most people are unaware, you will pick it up by, by this time next year that there was a market crash, we're in a market crash, etc. cetera. Uh, but yeah, this is a very good book, right? And inside this book, I bring it up because I've read it so many times, Barnes Lens, you know, uh, you know, I don't know where, like late, 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 I don't know, somewhere, uh, 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 when he goes through the back testing phase in page 170 towards the end, you know, he, he talks to the, you know, a George, the smart hedge fund trader from page 176. You can go look this up if you have the book. And there it is there, pound JPY. I don't know if you guys, is this clear? I, I know, I know it feels like I'm wasting time, but this stuff is there. Africans, this stuff is literally in beautiful books, right? There it is there. They're talking about the pound JPY trade right there. And, and they're talking about the carry trade and they're comparing interest rates. And I find this concept, this hedge fund is actually like teaching bonds something so incredibly important. Understanding your asset classes, understanding the countries and economies they represent, and understanding how to play the game. And, and, and it's, it's here. It's here. I mean, this book was written in 2009 or 
even earlier, I don't know, 2007. So just before the market crash of 2000 or during the market crash 2008, the beginning of the market crash. And the game, the play is right here. The same play that Barnes is trying to figure out the difference between the pound and the Japanese yen from an interest rate perspective. We know JPY is a safe haven in the world because it keeps its interest rates low. We know pound has these weird times where its interest are quite high. You know, uh, we could Google that, but, but the, 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 that's neither here nor there. On the governing time frame, we have the collision of two worlds. We've got a governing supply and a governing demand. Governing PCP supply, that's given out a fresh touch, excuse me, and now we're there for a retest. But the retest is causing problems, right? It's created a nice, strong, bullish engulfing pattern inside, right? And, and that could be interesting. No, not only that, but if you look at market structure, prices closed above. Well, not closed above, but prices definitely created a BOS, right? a break of market structure somewhere up here. So, so, so there is fundamentally, uh, you know, a shift, I think, in market thinking, market uh, 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 understanding, and now we wait to play. We know that our patterns like this need to go for a retest as a governing time frame. So the month of November is red, but it could only be red just to become very green in December. And this is why I hate this chart. This chart is not the most, uh, you know, you know, safest play right now because price could go on to maintain a governing supply or could then go on to activate a governing demand, right? So let's go to Akinhashi, right? And this is what I hate. So they, not hate, but 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 the, the supply here is not that strong. It's not that reflective in terms of order blocks. We've got complicated 365 candles that are reflective here. What if markets are done and create an imbalance to the upside? You see, that's my current hesitancy right now. So trade very wisely, pound JPY. And I don't know if I'm going to include it in the plan, only because I must also be very cognizant of my uh, psychological relationship with this chart. This chart, I lost 570 US dollars to pound JPY at the beginning of the year. And then later on, when I got in, I made one. I made. So I go to my trading plan real quick. I made 1,362 US dollars. And then on trade three on pound USD, uh, pound JPY. On the 31st of August, BOS, weekly downtrend, blah, 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 blah. Uh, my take profit, you guys probably think I'm making this up, was meant to be 2,500. I don't know if you guys can see this clearly. 2,537 with the 200 US dollar stop loss. And I, I lost half of that, right? Because the markets kind of like changed, changed the plan. So, and then and then the third, the fourth trade that I ended on pound JPY, I know there's a fourth one. Dave is there. It was a one is to four. I had to break even on zero. So out of the four big swings on pound JPY that I've taken, I've lost one 500. Then I made 1.3. And then instead of making 2,537 US dollars in the trade, I made half of that, one point something. And then the fourth trade, I broke even. So I don't feel like I have a clear relationship, you know, with this particular asset, right? It's, it's just, it's just, I, I, I seem to not do my best work on pound JPY. And so because of that, I am you know, excessively studying pound JPY uh, uh, because if it's my weakness in my portfolio, I need to master it. Uh, it's very important. You, you guys can't do any of this stuff, by the way, if you don't have trading journals to keep track. Like I know this is my, my only asset that, that bothers me and I hate it spikes. I hate how it moves. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Right. So, anyways, on the weekly time frame, you know, you know, you know, notwithstanding the fact that on the governing time frame we've got some type of supply versus demand, you know, head collision, we can see there's a strong drop taking place into a bullish engulfing pattern. Right, and it's about to make contact with the golden ratio area. There was structure here that was kind of like removed to the downside. One, one could call it a flag, you could call it a, 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 a peanut, a, a chat pattern, whatever makes you happy. And then there's better cells up here, it seems, right? Not the best uh, from a weekly perspective, but something like this would be, you know, deemed cell worthy. And this weird line here, I'm happy to draw a line across like that is a good supply, but you can see that market spiked in here to drain this area of value then dropped. 
and then made contact right there, right? So you can see the stuff, guys. It's not like if I've taught you before, it's the same stuff. I'm just here to, to kind of like give you that boost. But all of you who have learned my, my trading style, money is being made every day in the same way. So area of competition, mark. So, 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 so it fell and we missed it. I, or I missed it, right? I'm not in it. Right. So then as markets were falling from this level, I noticed that they created, you know, you know, a strong bearishing off in pattern. And, and a part of me wants to take a sell here. I won't lie. I do want to take a sell there. Uh, uh, market inefficiencies, very strong relative to the upside. So I know for a fact will lead to a sell off. The problem is how strong are the buyers down there? Well, well, what's the buyer's commitment in this area? Right. Will this work? Only time will tell. Right. So, so risky trade, do your own assessments. And I'm, I'm saying that because honestly, I am just depleted, man. I am depleted with pound JPY. Uh, I'm okay not to trade this pair for the rest of the year, uh, uh, if, if I'm being honest. I am okay to not trade this pair for the rest of the year, but I will pay or put a pin in order here, pound JPY, and then see how that works out. If it does work out, be very careful. Your risk to reward ratio is at risk. All right, and, and, and I say all these things and I just wonder if traders, if traders hear the whole thing, they just hear sell, but they don't hear about the precautions, the look left, look right. Uh, um, I don't know where my, my measurement tool is. There we go. So short position. So if you do a short here, you know, you're kind of like forced to have, first of all, you know, a, a, a sky tower and then if you, a, a, a high stop loss, sorry. And if you decide on, you know, exiting where price kind of like started, right? It's not the best risk reward ratio. We do have very weak demands here. That's why the zone is in red. I mean, if you go really to the heart of the matter, we've got a broken demand and then some type of hidden demand rejection and then a savior at the bottom here. So this green zone is the savior zone. And, and I think it makes sense right now on this chart moving forward to delete my red zone, but I don't want to delete the red zone because the way price left the red zone, right, there was some clear uh, hidden demand that kind of like held price up. And I'm assuming it is the creation of some H4, H1 demands on smaller time frames somewhere in this building block here that allowed price to kind of like, you know, you know, you know, breathe again. But anyways, I am, I'm cognizant of the fact that this area of value is weak. I'm cognizant of the fact that there's a very strong rally that needs to be sold off. Uh, uh, and then and then this could be a good place to then kind of like, you know, elongate our, our targets just a little bit to give us that one is to three, but bearing in mind that markets will do what they want, right? So, so, so it's kind of like, uh, uh, I'd say C-class trade because of where my mind is. So C-class trade, I could be seeing what I want which is to remake back that 500 US dollars that I lost at the beginning of the year. And you'd be like, Leroy, but that's so far away. No, your subconscious mind never forgets the things that hurt you. Never does. You never forget how people make you feel. Never forget who breaks your heart. Never forget the first time you bent in on the stove. You never forget the number of times and how you keep losing money in the markets because it creates a trader identity. So you are, if you're not conscious of the fact that you just randomly keep trading, randomly keep lo losing. One day you'll be serious about trading. It doesn't have to be this year, but the day you are serious about trading, the number of bad habits, bad trading psychology hacks that you need to confront and the amount of pain you've gone through in the market is going to be your Goliath. So I manage my giants all the time, right? Psychologically, just to make sure. And guys, once again, read the books that I'm throwing to you, follow my videos, come to freaking class. The remote course, the 365 course is the cheapest it's ever been. We say the first hundred, now we're saying for the whole month of November, for the whole month of November, it's a hundred bucks. Next year, you'll never see a discount again. This is not like a, a hype threat. Next year, I'm changing the whole structure because I, 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 the academy grows at such a, a slow rate. So I might as well just focus on who's in it. So next year, we're reducing live intakes, right? Redoing the remote course and, and adding the module three, and I don't see the reason why I'll do discounts next year because this whole year, no one in the academy who's registered so far has ever paid 300 US dollars for my course. No one. That's the full price. No one. There's always been a discount for this. And, and, and it was a tester. I do things in a year to test them. I can tell you right now, discounts don't really lower people in. Discounts don't really uh, um, uh, uh, bring in the masses, so to speak. So why not keep the, 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 the product at its value? 
200 bucks, those were serious will come. Next year, we want to shift our attention on not just taking in new people, but building the actual academy. And the only way to do that is to kill the number of live classes I do, number one, and actually work in-house. So entry point is via the remote course. So you all are, we are all on the same page. And what we do on a week to week is war rooms like this, but far much more in-depth, a lot of intraday live training to get like a different plan for the academy next year. I am saying all of this to say is if you really want to understand this stuff and you want to get it cheap, the only time to do that now is now in November. Now in November, price is $100 instead of $300. It's 67%, 70% off. Uh, and in December, remote course will go back to about $150 US uh, just for the YouTube uh, uh, promotion that I've been running. But since it's clear that I'm not going to be get to 3,000 subscribers anytime soon on YouTube, we're going to kill that stuff and just go back to our normal price tags and just add value to our community, right? So it's on you uh, here, right? Moving forward, Palm JPY done and dusted. And by done and dusted, I've showed you, you know, the, the type of area of concern that I'll be looking into. If you are in the remote course, you will then see the full traders plan, how I want to maneuver the two entries that I'm going to put in there, just in case entry one goes kaput. All right, entry one goes kaput. The next pair that I want to look at is Pound AUD. Right, the first sign from my partner uh, uh, that I'm, we're running late has arrived. So I am now wanted to, to, to go back to, um, I'm assuming my bags are now all packed or, or something like that. Um, uh, um, so let me just quickly shoot a message. I apologize. I just want to be honest. Uh, please start getting ready to leave. Uh, I don't want us to miss our shot up to the airport. Please start getting ready to leave. Right, so let's see how much we can do, guys. See how much we can do. So we've got pound AUD monthly. I've never seen somebody. This is beautiful, right? So, so price has been falling from supply. You know, this one here, very ugly area of competition. I'm just going to draw it in case you can't see it. Why is the uh, uh, ugly area of competition? Because of that long, 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 disgusting week. This toenail of a satin meant we couldn't get the type of high sales we have wanted. So we started setting down here and here. Nothing really to do. There's really nothing to do. I don't trust a single buy right now, unless unless if my governor is buying. I, I really, I, I, I cannot like put it into words how much I hate this chart. Because when markets start moving onto this stupid tri asymmetric triangle pattern like this, and then you need to expect a breakout. And the breakout is generally the, the length of the base of the triangle, number one, right? This is a governing time frame, it's very long term. So we don't know how we rock. This is what I'm saying. And, 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 and this could be annoying. This could be a break to the upside like that or a break back to the downside, right, over time. So the 10-year plan break. But it, it's just about reading it accurately. So, for example, markets seem to have arrived at a governing demand. So that's why I'm saying I, 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 I see why to buy. I just don't want to buy. I see why to buy, I don't want to buy. And, and maybe I'm just being stubborn. Maybe I am just being stubborn. Covenant supply, markets didn't make it in for the retest. Am I right? I think I'm right. Oh no, I'm wrong. There was a long week here. Don't you candle. See there, markets drop, but then markets hit it, markets fall, right? So, so this has been fairly a nice accurate trade and now markets have arrived at what could be considered a demand, but if you were to really, really consider it, they might be just some, just, just a few more pips to the downside is my, is my personal take, but because of the unclarity, man, it's just, uh, I'm very unclear. That's why it was drawn the way it was drawn before. It looks like markets have already started reacting a little bit bullish. Let's go to see how the week ended. Markets closed on the other side of a trend line. Right. And went to go retest the trend line. So it, again, it's kind of like, so, so if you go back here, show you some cool stuff on multiple time analysis and you switch to these candlesticks that we had before. And then we redraw that lower demand that we had before, which would look something like that. 
you know, this area of competition here has been triggered though. But anyways, let me come back here to the daily uh, normal candlesticks. You will see that we are targeting the cluster here and not really the bullish engulfing pattern there. And then if we go to the weekly time frame, targeting that cluster there, right? The bullish engulfing pattern on the weekly time frame is now this one and markets haven't made it. And markets now on the other side of this trend line and have done a retest which means I think we can still expect more selling. That's why I don't want to buy, right? So we can expect at least respectively to, to that particular demand. That's another 288 pips, number one. Okay, that's quite a lot. Number two, you know, if you want it to be very tight, right, You and expect price to be safe by the long, 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 long term uh, uh, bullish uptrend, then, then, then that's a winner. But let's just readjust it and draw it properly. I see it's moved off point A is correct. This is point B, right? So as I have point A, point B, I simply extend. Once I have point A or point B, there we go. I simply extend, right? So I've got this beautiful extension from 2013 in March and then markets hit it 2016 after three years. Same 2017, one year profit target, 2000, August, 2017. March 2017, August 2017, then markets rallied, 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 came back to it in January this year, right? So, so, so this could be a nice place to catch up. You see, you see now when you correctly draw your trend line and you have a clean demand. So, if I was to buy this thing, I'd buy it here. But I'd, I'd obviously, you know, buy with such such hesitancy, man, because really, guys, it's, it's, it, you're, you're hoping, you know, for price to really break structure, right, and then fake out. So hoping for price to break structure and then give you a fake out. That is to say, you want price to go a little bit lower, because it's not like it's going to be an asymmetric fall in the next three to four weeks, right? So markets are going to trade sideways, and whichever price makes contact with this demand, it's going to be on the other side of the trend line. And we're hoping that the bot to be a wick, the body will then close just above and then start going back up, right? So you whole, you literally are playing a fake out trade, right? So what might be prudent, but very risky is to in fact focus on the sales because obviously the selling might happen a whole lot earlier. It's going to the daily time frame, right? Selling has already happened. It's starting to happen, right? So this is that one candlestick on the weekly time frame making contact with the second upward trend line, confirmation trend line. Hope you guys can see the language here that's going on. You see this one green candle th that made contact with this. It broke the trend line. Now it's going to go retest the trend line. Let me, let me put it that way. Now it's coming down. So this is what we, we want to see, right? So I would have a sell here, although it's late. Um, but it's worth having. It's really worth having. I, I know there'll be cowboys who are going to sell stop and, and run with it. Good luck, cowboys. Um, I'll, I'll have a sell here, although it's late. Why is it late? Because it looks like this candle started off there. So this past week that just ended, made its way back there, bouncing off this, right? So I don't like trades like this because again, you've got two opposing forces, bearish and golfing pattern and bullish and golfing pattern. Mr. Ronald once said, who wins <laughs> in the, <laughs> in, the in, in, our, in our private group? I, I, you had such a good question, man. Uh, who wins between the two, right? So, 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 just focus on where money is flowing from, All right? Supply governor to be very tricky win, um, 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 and remember, you know, the deeper price goes. If I extend this without destroying the trend line, I hope I can. I'll show you something. Right. So there we go. So I'm looking at this beginning of this phase here, here, here. Then market's breaking. I just want to extend this line. Now that I've found the correct path for it. I don't want to shift my point A and point B because it will actually mess up the structure. I hope people know how to draw trend lines correctly. But we've got a bearish and golfing pattern that gave us a fresh touch and has not yet given us a retest. All right. So, so you, you could have a very nasty trajectory, man. Uh, uh, and ma'am, man and ma'am, sir and ma'am. Right. So this could continue down. All right. And this plays off well. But if it's coming all the way down there, this is now in trouble. Right, so then you could get something like that, and then markets continue down, or or you get like a shorter retracement as markets slowly start to build their market structure of higher highs and higher lows. For example, 
when you're looking at the daily time frame for higher highs and higher lows, you've got you know this situation here and then that and then that, right? So so far this uptrend has been intact. It's what we want to see happen. We want to see price turn below, you know, like ah ah ah, right? Lower highs have come because we've got uh, you know lower highs here, but now we want to start to see lower lows as well. But if markets don't maintain that situation, that's perfectly fine. The reverse of that, before I confuse you, it's just important I tell you everything. The reverse of that is obviously the opposite, where markets start to change everything. Uh, and by everything, you know, markets eventually want to maintain the slow. Uh, and, and there's really not much to close. Maintain the slow, so markets close like here, back up here, and then come down and maintain the low, and then keep going up. Right, so this would be that uh, 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 lower highs being maintained, you know. So again, it's like a dealer's choice, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume up until I'm very satisfied with the real governing zone, you know, being being honored in the markets. I'm going to assume that markets are still slightly selling. Uh, the risk for me, however, is where is price going to sell from? So I'm going to have one sell order here, 1%, and then a 5% risk up there. Why up there? Better to always sell higher than low, right? And as long as markets on the other side of this trend line, I will be able to take the trade. This, this is fine. For someone who's busy like me for the week, by next week, Friday, I'm sure markets would have given me the type of clarity that I want, right? So the next five days are important. We could get a strong drop. Woof. So it might be smart for you to start selling now. I don't know. But for me, that's not how I roll, right? On the H4 time frame, this is what we have. That's clean. So I'll sell here first. All right, it looks like it's a, it arrived there on the daily time frame, but but then now now I'm getting some some clean clarity, right? So we get some action down here, and then then we go, we're good to go, All right? So so that's an option. H1 time frame. Mm. I'll have two sell orders, one on the H4 stop loss outside the daily. And then a beautiful, tight, uh, 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 you know, healthy sell order on H1 to catch that stop loss outside the daily as well. Um, I don't like this consolidation phase, but you know, it's smaller time frames now, so it's not not much I can do to to to, to confirm this. But if this asymmetric markets keep going down this channel, that's then 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 that might not happen. Uh, so what I want to start to see is someone of a breakout to join me up there and then connect me down there. Right. The most important part about this on the smaller time frames is break of market structure is so important. And you want to use the order block that broke structure. This is the structure I'm talking about. You want price to break lower. So today is Sunday. So you could get Monday, Tuesday, something like that. And then eventually that and then when that happens because if it like liquidated everyone down here then we can get a clean run all right that's a very good trade to have right so i hope that's clear guys i'm so sorry i hope this was helpful uh you know war rooms are generally normally longer than this uh but time is not on my side 629 pips everybody don't sleep on this trade do not sleep on pound aud all right so we'll look at the indexes in the next video uh, okay, I've got two more pound pairs. Let's do all the pound stuff, then I go. Pound cat. Everything is just dropping. Mm. Okay, I will. <laughs> Told you guys to sell clearly. These notes are war room trades. Right? This is my FXM. This is my war room slash live account chart. So when I write notes here, I know I've told someone at some point in their lives to sell. So the price is still going in that particular direction. I don't know if I'm selling this trade. I would have to check my other trade account. I honestly have no recollection of being in pound cap. And if I do, I probably use this demand to get out, if I'm being honest, right? Which is unfortunate because markets are dropping lower. Nah, yeah, okay, so I got out. I definitely got out. That's why I, I don't know. Right, so we now have the supply that broke the camel's back, baby. Right, we've got the supply that broke the camel's back. Somewhere here. 
might be well worth your attention. Ladies and gentlemen, it might be well worth your attention. It used to be a demand, price is gone. BOS, break of market structure, good stuff, right? Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Right, so let's just go back in time. I wanna see what our target is. This is good money. Oh, this is good money, guys. Another 600 pipa. Right, so, 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 so there's a lot of weakness in pound, eh? Like, can I just quickly check the index? BYX, British Pound Currency Index. Yes, yes, you're living on supply, yes. Looks exactly like pound USD. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. Make your money. Make your money. And this is literally what we want to see. Right. So, 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 yeah. I, I mean, there's not much to say. And I'm rushing. You see, when I start to rush through charts, it's better for me to stop so that I can pick up the ball in the next video, you know, just taking my time. But this is a clean run, guys. Please try and get into this. Right, stop loss outside the zone would be much, much appreciated. Risk smart, of course. H4 does not look nice. You are oof, very ugly. Oof, 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 oof. What's going on here? That's disappointing. Let's go to H1 quickly. Right, so this is five traders. When I when I come back for you guys, when I'm done with the with the with the people with the prop firms that our brothers and sisters have created, I need to talk to you about the one hour time frame. I need to talk to you about the one hour time frame. It's a very good place to hold it, right? So I, would, I me personally, the way I play it, you choose how you want to play it. If you're new and you've followed my course, remember daily H4 is for you. I've shown you daily H4, just rewind the video, right? But what, what I would like to do, generally speaking, is after I've found a good daily zone or a good place where price has done what it's done, I will come find the cause, right? There's always a cause. There's always someone who moves someone. And then the, my, my, my cause is, is where I go a little bit crazy, a little, a little bit unhealthy on the lot size, which is very, very bad. Don't do that, right? But on the, on the H4 time frame, we have this situation here where we've got basically what would appear to be a true supply up there, right? Why? Because this is the supply that broke this bullish engulfing pattern. In other words, this is a supply that broke the structure, right? So the BOS is somewhere here where the structure was broken and the supply has not yet been tested. So that's why you must be very, very careful about a lot of these moves because your stop loss is the only thing that's stopping you I'm, I'm talking to people who now understand how markets move. So, so I, I don't expect you guys to be drowning out, opening and closing trades before those trades do what they're supposed to do. If you're one of those people, you need to take the course, right? But now in terms of the daily time frame, you have this situation, right? So think about it this way. My white line is my stop loss is outside my, my, my daily healthy, right? And then this is my true sell on the H4 area that needs to be triggered. And then this is my H1 supply. That needs to be triggered, right? So this is literally how I would stack my orders. Um, basically, H1 supply for me, definitely, definitely primary target. Definitely primary target. Uh, uh for, 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 for some serious staking, right? Uh, one. And then this one here is what we're currently going through right now. So this current swing here, 50% has been used, but we're currently going through, right? When markets make contact up here, you know it's game time, but you will be triggered if you use simply a daily entry. Keep it simple, keep it big, right? You will be triggered somewhere down here. So this is where markets are. Markets have, have, to, have to cross this line. And the reason why they have to cross this line is because there's a lot of retail trader money here. What's the retail trader money here? Support and resistance. Where are these guys' stop losses? Just above this zone. So what do I want to do as smart money? I want to outbid them. I want to outbid them. For me to outbid them, I must drive the prices up, 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 take out, liquidate every retail trader, and then slowly but surely when nobody's around, drop the price. So what do you do? You don't never mix my trading strategy with other trading strategies. You commit to one thing and you see it through. It's like marriage, right? Until that person dies or, 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 or something, right? So, 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 and then, and then targets, come on, all the way down there. We hold. Oh, we hold. 
We hold, we hold, we hold, we hold, we hold. As long as our governor is saying we sell, that's that's a nice chart, man. Pound NZD, this has been good. I mean, the war room is short, but there, there's some money to be made here. The war room has been slightly short. Look at that, man. Missed you. Money is, the war room is short, but there's some serious money to be made. Right, so we've got pound NZD. Ah, change of hands. Be very careful. No, but the price on the other side of the structure. Interesting. Very interesting. What's the, someone told me last time, is it NXY? ZXY, New Zealand dollar index. What's going on? Ah, yes, of course, of course, of course. It looks like NZD, USD left a strong demand, breaking a long bearish structure, going to the moon. This is currency moon. <laughs> Right, okay, 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 okay. Bullish engulfing pattern. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so we're gonna start getting some strength in NZD. That's quite interesting because dollar is quite strong, right? So, so NZD, USD, that is very interesting. Very interesting, looks the same. Oh, we arrived at an FMC. Oh yes, we did, we did, we did. I took this trade, we did, we did. I was about to say we arrived at an FMC because I've been telling you guys, I've always wanted to sell at these 16 June FOMC levels, because I knew the sales would be amazing. So we've taken the first hit. Now look at this, markets are wanting to remove this area of value, right? Price is dropping out due to, you know, short-term dollar weakness. Uh, um, um, and the DXY, I can go through that stuff here, show you the DXY chart. I know, I know we've got a chart at the background, pound NZD, but I wanna see you, see this? Took out the H4 supply that was here. And now in the daily time frame, we are climbing. Dollar is climbing. Dollar has not broken a single demand. I mean, if you ever wanted proof, ever wanted rationality, has not broken a single demand. Did you guys, did I guys tell you the, the how to predict when the next trend line touch will be? Did I teach you the stuff? How to predict when the next trend line will be? And you can see markets are formulating that. Right. Number one, if you take the course, learn how to draw trend lines correctly. You can't draw retail traders' trend lines. You have to draw smart money concept trend lines because they need to be in line with supply or demand. Long story short, here's one here. So this is the FOMC interest rate on the 16th of June, where FOMC started to talk about super increase in interest rates, heights, or rather starting to taper, et cetera, et cetera. Once you get that point A to point B, you get your first touch. What you want to do is you simply want to measure from point A to point B. I'm giving you guys so much today. Right, something like that. You know what I mean? You know, as accurate as your eyes and hands can be. And, and, and once you do that, you want to clone the equal distance. You want to say, all right, now that I've got my first touch, where is there a probability for my second touch? And this is how we know when not to get emotional in the charts. We know that for price to come back and hit a trend line, markets have to go down. Right. So, so, so I'm not yet thinking there's going to be a strong push rally first, but I do believe there are some orders that need to be collected here. Somewhere here, you can see. So my line is somewhere here. If you go to the H4 time frame, I don't want to make the zone way too big, but this all of this here, all of this here, is an interesting place to wait. This very nice, but just in case, why? One hour time frame, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah, all my demands. If this demand gets broken, it's going to be the first in a very long time. But none of the daily DXY demands have been broken, right? So supply was taken out uh, this past week with the FOMC confirming to taper, which I don't know how everyone has not been following content. I don't know. I've been talking about this for a very long time in the channel, right? So now it's up to the DXY to see how far it falls. Do you land here and go back up and rally and break the 95? Or are you going to drop a little bit lower to collect some orders? There's a strong area of value, man. There's so many demands in here. Some not yet used, right? Some completely fresh areas of value here. So it's quite interesting to see that NZD is trying to make a play for it, you know, while, while it still can. Right, pound NZD, our last chat, everybody. I am way off time. I am, I'm in trouble, actually. I can already feel the tension in the house. I am running late. Right, so, so look at this. So markets have dropped. Um, um, the index is pointing to some strength, so this would make sense. Why we marked this a long time ago as a potential place for price to drop. So we're gonna have to watch it. I don't feel like it's a smart idea to make a trade call this week. 
on the pound. Got more longs. Got more longs, so strength is about to return than shorts. And NZD, we also have more longs than shorts. Yeah. So for for me, I, I just don't want to play with fire. I don't. I mean, I mean, you could you could get a clean buy. You honestly could get a clean buy. I'm just not interested in it. I personally am not interested in, in it here because of this. This is a weekly time frame as price was dropping down. So the clean buy could, could be cut off somewhere there. And it would be worth taking that risk if you want to take the risk for the clean buy, as long as you know when to get out for, for that particular swing. Why did they put another order block right there just before price makes contact? Don't like stuff like that. Yeah, my brain. Maybe I'm distracted by the fact that I have to go, but be careful. I'll go H4. I'll go H4. Ah, mm, I don't know. Not, let me come back to this one, guys. I, I can hear I can hear voices in my house. People are about to go. Um, I'm so I'm distracted. I apologize. It's been a good war room. I don't want to make a terrible trade call. I know it was short, but we covered a bit of assets. Think about what I said about uh, our Wealthy in Three Years program. Think about what I said about joining the remote course and joining the team. Think about what I said about the future of cryptocurrencies, just depending on where you are, who you are. The only thing that maybe we can spend exactly three minutes on is what's going on this week. The only thing, uh, um, um, and it doesn't matter. You know, news now for me, won't matter that much anymore because we now have screen alignment, right? So this week we'll have Powell speaking, right? He can't retract, um, but he's gonna make the market stance. He's gonna make those dollar levels, that trend line that I've just shown you. Markets are gonna make contact very soon this week. PPMI, very important, kind of on Tuesday. Powell is speaking again, right? So he's gonna lay out the plans for the taper, which I've done a video, right? 15 billion US dollars per month. On, on the tapering, treasuries and mortgage stuff. It's all there on, on our YouTube channel, CAD. Then you've got CPI that I spoke about earlier on. Then you've got AUD, Treasury Currency Report. That's always fantastic. This is on Saturday, so expect a market gap the other week, Monday. Right, okay, guys, there's not much. There's really not much. 365, shake my hand. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you've enjoyed this so far. I really hope it's been, you know, uh, uh, what it. Jay had questions. Jay, you wanted me to look at Euro NZD. I apologize. I have to do this because he's a student and I made notes to, to not forget NZD, Euro NZD. I just don't remember the actual question, Jay, and I'm running behind time. So can I, I'll come back and do this properly. But if it's clear as without, you know, too much deep analysis, then we can make a call right now. The question was Euro strength versus these people. Oh, this is ugly, Jay. This is very ugly. Oh, Jay, why, 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 why are we here? Um, nothing wrong with the chart. I just don't like charts like this. When markets come out of strong consolidations, I prefer for them to trend quite a bit before I even interfere. When markets come out of strong consolidations like this, I prefer for them to trend a whole lot more before I even risk a, a penny. Uh, and that's because um, during consolidation, markets create a whole lot of market memory for ranging traders. And those guys are very stubborn. They, they, they will rather keep price there, up and down, up and down in a range than let it run. Right, so we've got a break, 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 break. Higher, high, higher, high. Okay, it's promising. Contact with the FIB, but more drop. Right, so whew, what does that mean? What can I say? I mean, Euro is definitely weak. NZD is strong, so this makes sense. Yeah, man, look, uh, Jay, I'll keep the thesis very clean, man. We expect more Euro weakness in the next coming weeks. This is why we are selling Euro USD, uh, number one. Uh, and then we expect that nothing can stop us. Nothing can stop us on Euro. Right. So on a chart like this, I really would be doing, you know, nothing more than trying to sell, I guess. I, I would very much be 
hardly interested in buys unless if the buyers lead to rallies uh, that are going to get sold off. And, and you can see strong rally got sold off, rally sold off. And so I, 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 I'm not a counter trader. I, I just don't like not being able to sleep at night. Right. So, you know, there's definitely some action there. All right, and you can see that a rally has started. So now we've got two options, bearish Fibonacci on the daily time frame. Ah, 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 ah. You see, this is nice. This is nice, Jay. Thank you, Jay. Jay's giving us a good trade. Look at this. So we've got we've got we've got somewhat of a of a supply somewhere here on the weekly time frame. If you want to draw the doji candle, you could. It, only because, like I said earlier on, I'm drawing all my order blocks in zones now because of how markets have been reacting to these things. But let's just see what happens when we do that. Right. And then when you draw a daily Fibonacci, trying to confirm the, the swing high, swing low. I get. Make your money, bro. Jay, Jay is the only 365 student from the Philippines. How cool is that? That is super cool. Mr. Lamini is the only 365 student in Swaziland. Then you've got a lot of amazing people in Kenya, South Africa, Zambia. Mr. Kakoma, only student in Zambia. Sorry. Yeah, only student in Zambia. Uh, and then you've got 16 senior traders in Dubai, one in Hong Kong. Like, it's just interesting. Like, I don't even know, Jamie, you need to talk one on one, by the way. Uh, I haven't forgotten our meeting, buddy, but just so cool that someone in the Philippines is in 365. I, I don't know how you guys got it. Thank you, Algorithm. This is why it's important, guys, to keep liking these YouTube videos, sharing the stuff. Right, Jay, I'll sell there. I'll sell there. I'll be patient. I don't know about buying up there, but if markets come, come my way, I'll be here with you. And that's healthy. That's a healthy area of value. I'll be here with you, man, on the daily time frame. So that's I'm gonna add this to our 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 trading plan, Euro NZD. That's actually a very good trade. This is a very good sell sell. Uh, way too much confluence breaking of market structure clearly as day here. I'd sell here, and then I would hopefully ride the wave. So we, we I don't know what kind of strength it will take for price to get there. That's the only problem. I don't know when this will happen. Because if it happens when markets have already changed hands, then I won't be that excited. But if it happens in the next week or two, I'll be very excited, right? So just watch out for that. And Jay, you had Euro Swiss franc, which is really the last chart, and I absolutely, absolutely have to go. Well, I'm gonna find myself single. Oh no, 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 no! I don't want. I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about this. I want because this is a video by itself, guys. This is called scenario analysis. This is the coolest chart ever. That that you know, this was the only signal that I gave. Well, I gave a couple. I gave one somewhere here, and then I gave this as a standby, a recent one. And it's so interesting how this chart has maintained the number of pips it ranges, the number of pips it drops, and the number of pips it uses to come up. So, 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 can I please do a scenario analysis video for you guys on this stuff? You know, in 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 the, in the next day or two, right? But but really, not much to do on Euro Swiss francs. Swiss is weak. Euro is kind of like weak. This is a good trade if we ever get if we ever get to go back up there. But we've been logically eating all the way down here. One trade there took my take profit. Another one there took my take profit. Was I forgot to get in here? But this is I need to teach you guys scenario analysis on Euro Swiss franc because it's one of the charts that do a better job of sticking to the script when it comes to scenario analysis. My name is Zero J. It's my Siri head trader of 365 Trading Academy. Shake my hand. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Have a fantastic day, 365. Cheers, everybody. Shut.